Hey, you guys. <laughs> Literally me. I'm funny. Sometimes I buy stuff, sometimes I say stuff, and sometimes I do stuff. Okay, it's Saturday and it's like rainy, misty outside, so my hair is not cooperating. <laughs> Let's forgive. This video is going to be my thoughts on the things that I purchased during the Sephora BIB sale. Yes, it's super freaking late. I just, you know, I film when I film, I post when I post, and this one is like a month after I've actually <laughs> shopped the sale, so. Now full transparency, I'm not doing an unboxing because I've been using these things for over a week now. <laughs> so I'm going to be able to tell you some very informative stuff that I have learned using these products. Also full transparency, I spent $135, that's after the 15% VIB discount, and I only got pretty much four things. Four things, you're only gonna see three because one of them was a gift. I got my friend some cleansing balm for Christmas. So that leaves me with three things and two of them you're actually gonna see because the other one was just like kind of a rebuy stock up item of one of my favorites, but we're gonna get into all of that. So let's get started. Okay, first of all, you know when you order from Sephora, you can get two free samples with each order. So the two things that I picked, I actually didn't get. <laughs> First bummer on this sale. The first one, I did pick a Tom Ford perfume sample, but I picked the Black Orchid scent, and they actually sent me this Costa Azura, which I don't like. So this is going in a giveaway for you guys. It's just one of those little pumps of a Tom Ford perfume, so there you go. The other thing that I picked, which I was actually really excited about and I didn't get in the box, was a sample of the Gucci La Obscura Mascara. So I was supposed to get like a little tube of this Gucci mascara and I was super excited to get that. So as I was going through the box, I was like, where's that mascara? Not there. So two disappointing things to start off, but you know, let's move forward and be optimistic. I say let's be optimistic because I do have some thoughts. <laughs> okay, the first one that we'll just get out of the way, I did re-up on my Olaplex Hair Bond Oil. You know, this is I think my third bottle that I have bought from Sephora and I usually buy them during the VIB sale because they are 30 plus dollars, so 15% off. I use this shit every day, I love it. Let's not judge the hair today, like I said, but this stuff is a lifesaver. I don't know how I would go without it, so I did get another bottle of that, which leaves us with two things. <laughs> And I'm gonna be honest, I'm returning one of them. So during the Sephora sale, if you're a VIB member, which I am, I think I have to spend another $293 to reach Rue's status, which I'm working on, I'm just not there yet. But for the Sephora brand products, you actually get 30% off. So I went ahead and bought this Sephora number 59 Pro Series Powder Brush because the other item that I bought, that if you saw the thumbnail, you pretty much know what it is already. I bought this to go with that item because I thought, oh, I'm getting this new compact with powders in it and I should have a brush like strictly dedicated to that. So I wanted a soft brush that had this kind of shape tip to help me in the pans. I was, you know, I had high hopes for this. This was like almost 40 bucks. And so I don't think it was like 34 actually. And so with 30% off, I was like, okay, it brought it down to 20 something. I thought I'd give it a shot. Look, I opened it already and used it, but I will be washing and sending this one back. This is the Sephora 59 Pro Powder Brush. I do like the size of this and I do like the shape of the tip. It is kind of soft, but dude, I used this, I think, for four days before I decided that I'm going to be returning it. I do not like how the bristles feel on my face. <laughs> they are sharp and uh, they shed and I am just re very not impressed with this. So this, unfortunately, is going to be going back. Look, I do not mind returning shit at Sephora. This is how I can buy so much stuff because if I don't like something, I will return it and get the credit and try something else. This is just, I am diligent about that and it's how I can experiment with so many different things. But yeah, this unfortunately is gonna be going back. So and that was a little bit of a loss. <laughs> Before we get into the main item, I just do want to say I am wearing that Dominique Cosmetics eye palette that I got in my BoxyCharm video. Today was my first time playing with it and I actually do really like the eyeshadows. 
But these glitter colors, whoo man. I did my eyes first. I used tape and I did glitter glue and wow, I got glitter all over my face. Like, I don't even know if you can see some of the remnants, but I have glitter particles like everywhere. I tried everything. I tried my cellar water cleaning it off. I tried eye makeup remover to clean it off. I did waited till it all dried down and I used a brush. I tried everything and then finally I was just like, I'm gonna have to put my concealer over it because that is just what I'm gonna have to live with for today. But I really do like the look that I created. I think I only used three of the colors, but look how nice they, I mean, they look pretty good. So pretty happy with that. And also I did use the St. Lux Morganite lip liner that I got in that boxy charm and I just put a little bit of Lunar Beauty mystery lip topper over top and I really do kind of like how this looks but we will get into what else I have on my face because I did purchase the Hourglass Elephant Palette. This is the Ambient Lighting Palette from Hourglass. Let me just tell you a little story about Hourglass and myself. <laughs> Many moons ago, I decided that I wanted to up my makeup game. Uh, at that point, I was wearing like drugstore foundation and a little bit of high-end blushes and bronzers, but I kind of wanted to like reach out and actually make a better base for my face. You know, I was using like wet and wild tinted foundation and all this kind of stuff. So I went into a Sephora. I'm gonna open up a credit card, save that 15%, and I'm just gonna get a line that somebody tells me because I'm in the store would work for my face. So I walked in, I got a very eager lady who I was probably her wet dream that day. <laughs> she was very, very helpful around my age, which was great. I told her of my concerns. She checked out my face, was like, yeah, this is looking a little orange, a little patchy on you. Let's get you into a line that's gonna work better for you. She took me right over to the hourglass section I had never heard of the brand before, way more expensive than anything that I had ever even thought about buying. But I ended up leaving with the primer, the foundation, the concealer, and the powder, all part of that line. I think that day I ended up spending $315. <laughs> Now what did come out of that is I really did like the Veil Primer that she sold me and I ended up buying another bottle of that eventually. And I did like at the time the concealer. I actually still have it. I just have moved on from it. Like I use it to prime my eyes sometimes now. So, mm. but I really did like the setting powder. The setting powder was great. And right now I have that House Labs powder along with a slew of other powders that I have like travel sizes of. So I'm not in need for it right now, but I will repurchase it one day because it really is a good translucent setting powder. I did return the foundation and I did return, I think I bought the eye primer. I returned both of those things. They were very cakey on my skin and I was just not a fan. So, but that did introduce me to the Hourglass line. So when I saw this come out and I saw a bunch of YouTube videos on it, I was semi-interested because as I get older, I am kind of looking for more of a glowy foundation, even though I'm really oily kind of in the middle of my face. My cheeks are a little bit dry, but my T-zone gets kind of oily, especially like right here. I have, you know, wrinkles and stuff. So it's kind of like, I don't like to draw attention to that. So I have been using matte foundations and kind of like matte setting powders. Although the Hourglass Translucent Setting Powder does have a little bit of a glow, it was just enough that made my skin look really, really nice. So I am kind of going more towards that glowy stuff. First, let's look at the box. So very cute. I did get the Elephant Palette. This comes in a Butterfly, which is a super light, this Elephant, which is a medium, and then Tiger, which is a deep. I was actually really excited to get this because I knew that it was a tin compact. So I thought that that was going to feel very nice and luxurious in my hands. Slightly disappointed in that aspect. It is a tin top and bottom, but the actual component was like, it reminded me of like an Altoids box. You know what I mean? Like I just thought it was gonna be like a little bit more luxurious. So a little bit let down in that respect. The mirror didn't even come with a film on it, which I was like, you know, part of getting like a luxury item is like peeling that film off. So, ah. so let's talk about the actual palette. So these are six kind of powdery full face elements that you're supposed to use to complete a look. 
I have some thoughts about it. I keep saying that, so like, let me just fucking get to it, right, bunny? So this is the light to medium set. It is a really good match for my skin tone. I will say that it's definitely on the warmer side, which no problem for me. What you get in here is a bronzer. You get two blushes. This is supposed to be like a coral blush, and then this is more of like a pinky rose blush. Then you get this strobe highlighter, which is pretty intense. And then you get these two finishing powders. These are what I had mainly purchased the palette for, is I wanted to try those finishing powders because I really did like the translucent setting powder from the Hourglass line. So I was really excited to try these because the whole thing of it being the ambient lighting palette is it's supposed to give you that like glow within so it does give you glow i'm not gonna lie if you're curious i am wearing it today but it has been a journey of getting getting it here i literally did my makeup like 10 minutes ago so it is super fresh right now i wore this palette nine days in a row and i tried every way to work with it i used every single foundation that i have i tried different primers and i'm telling you by the middle of the day i looked like i was sweating like not in like a oily way but just like an all over like pores pushing out liquid type way <laughs> like, best way i can describe it okay let's just say you're like trying to go to a meeting for work and you've got to run up a flight of stairs and you're late so you run up those stairs and then when you get to the top you like hold it in and catch your breath and you're like okay i gotta walk in there and just act like i got my shit together but you're like really out of shape so it's like you take a deep breath hold it in you walk into the room and then like while you're sitting there your body's just going through overdrive and so you start like getting that glistening sweat just pushing out of your pores that's what it looked like for me like <laughs> midday end of day I don't know if I'm such a fan of that. Let me take you through some of the foundation and primer things that I went through. I found out that my favorite primer, the Lorac 3-in-1 Light Source, this is not a good match for this palette with me. <laughs> I guess it's just giving maybe too much light. I have been using this primer almost exclusively ever since I figured out how to use it. You can tell it's almost gone. I have another bottle as a backup. This under my foundation, any foundation, makes my skin look great. But when I use this with my foundation and then put this on, it's just, it's way too glowy. It's way too sweaty, unfit, sweaty look. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not working for me. I tried this with my Tarte foundation, my NARS matte foundation, my Beauty Blender Bounce foundation, and I just couldn't find a combination that worked along with this palette. So then I went to my old trusty Dr. Brandt mattifying primer, and this actually did work a little bit better with this palette. I tried this primer with my Tarte foundation, and then what I'm wearing today, it's gonna surprise ya. Guys, I know I like, I love the idea of high-end makeup, but the foundation that I'm wearing today, like right now, this is all May. All May TLC foundation. Like, I know it's a drugstore brand. It's less than $9 a bottle, but for some reason, it gives me really, really good coverage and a really nice natural finish. Say what you want, but dude, this All May foundation, it works for me. So today I used the Dr. Brandt primer, the All May foundation, and then I did finish it off with this. So I am wearing the bronzer and then I kind of mixed these two blushes together to kind of get this like, I don't know, mid-tone glow. And then I used these powders kind of in this area to kind of like draw light to the face. You can see even right now, it does kind of give like a very light cast. I can't say for sure because today is the first day that I used the mattifying primer and the Alme foundation that it's gonna look this good three hours from now, four hours from now. But to be honest, I really thought before I put, did my makeup today, I really thought that I was gonna return this. I was having a really hard time figuring out how to use this correctly. Like I said, today is my 10th day of combinations of like trying it out. I feel like today is the best result that I got so far. So I have to continue using it. I may try using my Lorac with my Almay to see if that 
works um but right now you know i'm not too mad at it it looks pretty good right now like i said though in a couple hours it might look like i ate too much meat and then it's like i'm just sweating all over the place so we're gonna give it a shot i'm like 50 50 on this i thought the packaging was gonna be a little bit more luxe I do really like the first glow that you get when you put it on. I do think the bronzer and the blush is very pretty. I think it looks very natural. It's like a very glowy, natural flush. It doesn't look like I have a ton of makeup on, like as far as those two things go. So, I mean, I'm half and half. Like I really, I wanted these two powders to work. I just, I really did. As far as the brushes go, the two that I have found that work the best is the Tarte Snake Brush is what I've been using to put the finishing powders. And then this Lunar Beauty Brush, the double-ended one, is perfect for me to get into the bronzer and then the other side to use the blushes. So that's what I had to end up using instead of the brush that I'm going to be returning from Sephora. This one actually worked out pretty well. I wish that Lunar Beauty had a softer powder brush that was more this size. Um, I would definitely pick that up and try and use that with this. Now, I don't really like using that strobe highlighter. Do you want me to put some on just so you can see it? Like, I mean, I will gladly... Here, let me switch this one up. We'll just put a little bit of this on for you right now so you can see. This is the strobe highlighter right here. It's literally called Beaming Strobe Light. Like, that's the name. Put a little bit on this brush. Yeah. See, it's, it's really, it's really bright. It's like, I got to do the other cheek now because I can't not match. But it's really, really bright. I'm just, I don't know, as far as like highlighter go, because this palette gives off such a radiant light, I tend to not use the highlighter as much because I'm like, okay, I got way too much light bouncing off my face right now. It is really, really pretty. As you can see, it's very, it's very, very highlighty. So if you are into that, totally cool. I think this is a great option for somebody that doesn't have oily skin. It's it's a great option for that because the glow that it does get is beautiful. It does lay on the skin really, really nice. I just, I don't know, there's something, you know, I've got these like jaw lines right here and like it just kind of emphasizes them a little bit. Do I need like filler? <laughs> Try not to fuck with my face so much. You know, I already go and get the Botox sometimes. Like, mm. I do think that this is a good palette if you have like semi-dry skin and you want to have that healthy glow. I think it's great for that. I was gonna return it, but after my use today with the Dr. Brandt primer and my All May foundation, I think I'm going to keep it and keep using it, but probably not every day like I have been. <laughs> Thank you for sitting through that with me, guys. I know it wasn't that interesting, but in case you were interested in this Hourglass palette, I will say this was $85 before the sale. So that's where a big chunk of my money went was for this. I planned on buying it, so I made sure that I had the money ready. It's already paid off, which is why I'm kind of like, maybe I shouldn't return it. You know, I just keep it since it's part of my collection now. I uh, am returning this piece of shit, though, so... That's all I have for you today, guys. If you could please like this video, it really does help me out. If you could comment on if you tried this thing and you like it or any tips and tricks that maybe I can try to like kind of tone down the glow a little bit. I have put some setting powder over my face during the midday uh, just to kind of tone it down a little bit and it does work for a little bit but this is very, very glowy. But let me know if you have found a way or a trick that makes it work for you if you have combination or oily skin. And if you could subscribe so you can follow all of my shopping antics, that would be the awesomest. I love you so much. I will see you on the next one.